I arrived at the port of Palermo at four o'clock. I thought I could go on the vessel with my car quickly after the vessel berthed. That was not the case. I had to wait two and a half hours just to get on the ship. While waiting at the dock with my car, I was able to spend some time looking at other ships coming in and out of the port and see some of the beautiful sights around the port of Palermo. Finally, at 6.30, I was one of the first cars to board the vessel. The vessel itself, MS Yanas, was built in 2002 and is operated by Terenia Lines. It's 214 meters long, 26 meters wide, and weighing in at 36,000 tons. The vessel was built in Italy. I was the first passenger car to go on board, but before that, for a good two hours, trucks were being loaded onto the ship, onto this deck. Being one of the first cars, I thought I would be parking on this deck, but no. The traffic person directed me up this ramp to the higher dock, and here I am driving up the ramp, observing all the lattice work of steel. It actually was pretty cool to drive up and onto the dock. The ship itself is massive. I felt I could almost play tennis or host a soccer game on this deck. That must be the captain or some VIP's car. Right there, the red car. As I made a U-turn, I thought that my car would actually be lashed with rope to the deck to prevent the car from moving back and forth. That was not the case. All I would do is park and hug right up against this wall and park very closely to the car in front of me and the car behind me would also park very close to me. The cabin itself was quite small. It could house four passengers, but very tightly. The cabin was comfortable and it was air conditioned. Shower itself was extremely tight, but it was workable. From one deck to the from one side of the deck to the other, there were very long hallways. I was in this cabin. I got hungry as I finished my embarkation. And here is the cafeteria where passengers would select their food. We were going to pick some salads. The selection was pretty spartan outside of the salads and pastas and some meat dishes. Some veal scallopini with french fries and some basic drinks. I was expecting a much larger food selection. The food itself was on the more expensive side. The cafeteria dining room had a little bit of a dated feel as well to it. After dinner, I went up to a higher deck and spent some time just observing the port. Being not only a passenger ferry, the ferry is also used for transportation of vehicle traffic. That means truck vehicle traffic around the islands in the mainland of Italy. We had a great view of downtown Palermo. Very interesting, the truck back up into the vessel so that when it docked, it would go head first. The ship itself felt very dated little bit of an Art Deco feeling. As you can see here, the ship being 20 years old, it has seen some better days, both on the door and on the floor. Nonetheless, I was able to still observe the port comings and goings. After a while, I got a little boring and I went to check out other aspects of the ship. Here's a massive bar dancing lounge room. It's at the bow of the ship. 
This room was itself not utilized at all by any passengers during the trip. There were no escalators on the vessel, but there were elevators. Okay. Many people did not purchase a cabin, opting instead to spend the night in the bar, in the lounge, drinking, talking, reading, and just maybe even falling asleep in some of these chairs. Here we are in the middle of the ship. It was pretty cool that there was a cinema. It was closed though. Entry under normal conditions is five euro for the cinema. There was a library where I did some work. And I actually was a little bit disappointed that of all things, the gift shop where you could buy candy and duty free alcohol or some other things, it was closed within an hour of the vessel leaving Palermo. Many of the uh, people playing bingo or jackpot or slots were truck drivers. On the seventh on the floor seventh or the floor. seventh deck, it was a deck focused on children, a deck that was underused, but there was a playground here, but hardly any kids playing there. On deck eight, I went a deck higher and I continued to spend some time looking at vessels. This one is actually owned by MSC GNV. On this vessel, they actually had a kennel for dogs and cats to be housed during the journey. If passengers did not want to purchase a cabin, they could sleep and rest in some of these nice easy chairs. It was very cool, quiet, solemn, and air conditioned. I was a bit surprised that this reception was not manned of, at all times. There was no life safety drill either, so you pretty much got on the vessel and there was nobody or nothing pointing out where the life preservers are or where access to the lifeboats was. A little bit scary. However, I was able to um, enjoy this amazing sunset view of Palermo and the famous Mount Etna. It was a gorgeous view. It was very hot and it was towards the end of May when I took this journey. It must be super hot in the peak July and August months traveling in the summer in southern Italy. Gorgeous sunset. The cabin itself, along with the fee for my auto transportation, was 190 euro. You could decide to eat in this more expensive dining room or getting back to the main more economy size style dining room establishment this did get very busy as more and more passengers embarked i went to sleep and lo and behold we're now in naples ready to disembark gorgeous morning day the ferry journey itself takes roughly about eight to nine hours and we were able to check out other vessels that were in dock at the port of naples There are roughly 1,200 cabins on the vessel, and the speed of the vessel is 29 knots. The vessel operator, Tirenia, has 23 vessels. I was the first on the vessel, and I'm the first vehicle off the vessel. I had people chasing me to get off as soon as possible, so I had to quickly run and rush down the ramp and get ready for disembarkation behind this camper van and other trucks. Tirrenia as a steamship line was founded in 1936. 